In this video, we're going to be talking about the properties of gases. Some of these properties are going to be unique to gases, and others will be properties that gases share in common with solids and liquids. And I'm just going to give a list of these properties in no particular order. First of all, gas molecules have random motion, and also their motion is very fast. So we're going to say that they have random and fast motion. What does this mean? Um, if we were to look at a sample of gas at the molecular level, if we could zoom in, we would see that any given gas molecule is moving randomly around inside this container. So it's not being drawn in any particular direction. It's just moving until it bumps into a wall or bumps into another molecule and then just redirects itself in another direction. Imagine having a really bouncy ball like a super ball or a hard tennis ball throwing it against the wall and the way that it just sort of bounces around randomly. Also, these molecules are moving very fast relative to the motion of a solid or a liquid. And this is something that gases um, have that is unique. They do not share this property with solids or liquids. Gases, like liquids, take the shape of their container. Whatever container you put them in, that's the shape that they will take. Um, so we do not see them clustering uh, on the side of a balloon. For example, the gases just take up the shape of the whole entire container. A property of gases that is unique to gases is that it's very easy to compress them into a smaller volume. And it's also very easy to expand them into a larger volume. So we'll say that gases are easily contracted, which again means that we shrink them to a smaller volume, and they're also easily expanded, which means that we spread them out into a larger volume. Now when I say that they're easily contracted and expanded, this just means like with, with appropriate equipment. Of course at home you can easily expand a gas on your own, you probably do it um, somewhat regularly, like if you had a balloon and you popped it, that would cause all of the gas inside the balloon to expand, to fill up your whole entire house or wherever you might be when the balloon popped. Contracting a gas at home, smashing it to a smaller volume is quite a bit more difficult because we don't really have any of that sort of equipment at home, but with the proper equipment, it is pretty easy to con contract a gas into a smaller volume. Another thing that is unique about gases is that they are mostly empty space. So when we have a sample of gas, such as this balloon, the actual gas molecules inside the balloon are pretty spread out from each other. And mostly what's inside this balloon is just a whole lot of nothing at all. It's a lot of empty space. This is different from solids and liquids. We know that the molecules in solids and liquids are always in contact with each other and there isn't any empty space between the molecules. Because gases have a lot of empty space, this means that they have very low densities. Remember that density is calculated by taking the mass of a sample and dividing it by its volume. When there's a lot of empty space in a sample, the density is going to be very low. Because the density of gases are so low, a lot of times we express the density in units of grams per liter rather than units of grams per milliliter. This gives us a larger number than if we were to express it in units of grams per milliliter. Another property of gases, this is one that they share with liquids, is that the gases are very easy to mix. So if you bring a couple different gases together, like hydrogen gas and oxygen gas, they will mix with each other very well without any restrictions. And a lot of this is just due to the fact that there's a lot of empty space in here. So we can introduce a second gas molecule into this particular balloon and it wouldn't really interfere with or interact with any of the existing gas molecules.